In actual fact, I haven't played a lot of guitars. This has been my guitar for uh, 26 years. It's been on every single record that I've recorded since I started recording. It's played almost every concert in my professional career. Uh, I don't, in fact, have another six-string guitar. I don't need another six-string guitar. I've got this one, and that's all I need. That's been to uh, Australia. It's played um, uh, almost every, every territory in Australia, almost every state in Australia. It's played the Hong Kong Folk Festival. It's uh, been uh, on stage at, uh, at uh, Lincoln Center in New York. It's been on stage at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. It's been uh, all over London. It's been all, all over England. It's been in France. It's been in Germany, Belgium, Holland, Denmark. Um, God, where hasn't it been? <laughs> that, that guitar has been everywhere. So I, I, in fact, don't play a lot of guitars. This is, um, with all due respect to other makers, that's the best guitar that's ever been made in, in the history of music. And I have a, a whole lineup of people who will tell you exactly the same thing, uh, who have played that. I've been offered tons of money for that guitar. I've had musicians, uh, I did a workshop at the Calgary Folk Festival a number of years ago, uh, and I was down this end of the stage, and Jim Cuddy was down that end of the stage, and when the workshop ended, Jim Cuddy made a beeline for me, and he went, what is that guitar? And I said, it's Grit Laskin, and he goes, that's amazing. And he goes, what do you got in it? And I said, it's just a Fishman Thin Line pickup. He goes, that's all that's in there? I said, yeah. Uh, that is the most amazing guitar in the world. I, would, I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have it. Grit's instruments start out um, as just exceptional instruments um, uh, off the top. But I think this, the secret to making one of Grit's guitars sound really fantastic is that it has to be played a lot. And the sound for this guitar really didn't actually settle in until it was about 10 years old. And after 10 years of sort of bashing it and whatnot. So, I think what, what makes the, the guitar sound good is the fact that it's, it's been played a lot. It was a great instrument to begin with, but it's been played a lot. It's been banged around a lot. Um, it's, um, it's had a chance to breathe. It's had a chance to, to pick up all sorts of little quirks and, what, and all those things add up to the character of this particular, uh, of this particular guitar. Even the, I'm sure that the fact that there's a couple of cracks down here that, that, that opened in it that I'm sure had something to do with making the, the top resonate in a different way? Well, I own one. I own a 1988 uh, cutaway maple uh, top, back, and sides guitar. Um, that's beautiful. I love it. It has no inlay on it because I bought it. it um, I guess at one point he used to make some that he would stick in a store and sell on consignment before he had you know backed up orders for five years of custom guitars with huge inlays on them so I bought mine used from a friend who bought it used from a music store so it probably had gone through a couple of owners it's an absolutely gorgeous guitar everywhere I go um, almost every concert that I play someone asks me about the guitar um, I always let people look at it and try it out and um, usually they're just um, you know, sort of in awe of the way it sounds. And even people who don't have a lot of um, musical experience will say to me, oh, your guitar sounds so beautiful, you know, um, without knowing technically, like, what's going on. And then I'll say, well, this is made by a world famous guitar maker. I play guitar in a few different styles that are quite different. And it doesn't matter what kind of style I play it in. It could be like really pretty, delicate finger picking or it could be more like really hard strumming or um, somewhere in between. Um, it always sounds really even and nice across the whole sort of oral spectrum. The highs sound nice, the lows sound nice, the middle sounds nice. And I think from what I know about making guitars, I think that is one of the big challenges is having it sound like even across the, and, and just, it's easy to play. It's, um, you know, feels nice under your fingers. And, you know, there's something inspiring about playing something that sounds so beautiful. It just, sometimes I sit down with the guitar and I'm just like. Well, for me, it's the sound. Absol absolutely. The, the fact that he's an outrageous inlay artist uh, and engraver, 
uh, and an artist f f just on that level is a huge bonus as, as far as, as I'm concerned. But uh, the sound of his guitars are, as a player, you know, as a, as a player, you don't get to look at the inlay. It's facing out. <laughs> you're, you're here, and the inlay's, you know, to the audience or to whoever is watching you play. Um, and it's great, of course, you know, and, and people love having their own themes or themes that are specific to, to their lives and uh, put into the guitars. But for me, it was, it's the sound. The, the, uh, as a guitarist, I both finger pick and flat pick and strum. And I was always looking for a guitar that could do all of those, those things. And, and guitar players will tell you it's not that easy to find uh, instruments that will do all of those things well. And uh, that, was, that was one of the things that his guitars have done for a long time. And then there was a, um, <clears throat> there was a gap in, uh, in my scene grit uh, in, in our lives where um, I, for a number of years I was working at CBC Radio and then I was actually working in Montreal, so I w was not in this, the same town. And over, the, over a p period of time I'd had some different really good guitars, some Martins and a Collins, et, et cetera. And I came back to Toronto uh, to start Borealis and, um, and was in his shop early on in, in, in having moved back. And he had just strung up a guitar and he said, what do you think of this? And I played the thing and ordered one on the spot. I had been a few years you know, since I'd, I'd seen one of his, his guitars. And uh, I, there was just, it just blew me away. It was so good. And, um, and so... I, like everybody else, lined up for three years <laughs> to get my Alaskan guitar. <laughs> he wanted. He asked if he could have a bit of free reign in uh, designing it, and, and uh, of course, a significant event in my life was uh, leaving the CBC to start Borealis. So there's an inlay on the in the guitar depicting me in a small rocket leaving the the Earth as the, the logo of the CBC appears to be the Earth and headed for the stars where Borealis is written. Uh, in the in the stars, <clears throat> so it's a it's specific to me. I'll never be able to sell a guitar, of course, well, <laughs> nor would I want to. No, so, <laughs> I mean, for anybody who appreciates good art and crafts, or for anybody that's interested in guitars, uh, it's a, it's a lovely book. It's a and it, it, not only does it is it a, filled with great images of his inlay work, but it's also it talks about how he does it and. Uh, and uh, with some testimonials from other people in, uh, in the world of Inlay, uh, just testifying to how good he is. You know. yeah. And uh, I mean, obviously his, his Inlay work is just almost without match. I mean, I just can't, I, I don't think I've ever, I've ever seen anything like it from any, from any other guitar maker or, in, or Inlay artist. Uh, it's just astounding stuff and he's, he's very very creative when he gets an idea from a potential client for you know how what kind of a, of a picture they want on their guitar he'll always find some little quirky way around that subject to make it his own and make and, and just look at it from a slightly different angle um, and you know I, I have uh, the, the book that he and Brian Pickell put together of, of, of all his inlay art and uh, I, I leave it, actually it's the only coffee table book I have that I leave on the coffee table because people just love to look at that stuff. Grit's uh, inlay is, is breathtaking, both from an from execution point of view and from a story point of view. Uh, I've talked to him at length about how he builds uh, a story, how somebody phones up and orders Alaskan guitar and he says, okay, here's what I want you to do for the end, here's the ideas I want you to give me, and then we'll work them out. And then he draws them and he's a phenomenal drawer. You know, his, his drawings are, are as nice as his inlay work from a different perspective. Uh, and he'll go back to the, the customer and say, okay, this is the idea that I have. And, and uh, it's just an amazing process to see that, that inlay work go from an idea to a piece of paper to cutouts to the, the three-dimensional concepts that he has, both working in a three-dimensional uh, uh, media as well as working in uh, uh, kind of the, the, the history as it moves up the fingerboard kind of thing. It's an amazing thing to see. The other aspect is uh, the innovations that he's brought to guitar building, the, the Grit Laskin port, the uh, armrest, uh, these kind of things are uh, uh, often 
again because grit is is not a guy who toots his own horn is often something that people don't know the background you know they're they're building sound ports or they're building armrests and they don't know who started these uh, and uh, uh, he's changed the, the the world of guitar building both through his engineering and, and conceptual work and through his inlay I'm holding a soft Appalachian dulcimer made by Grit Laskin. As you can see, the man was a craftsman. Look at the wonderful way he's put in the frets. But he made it for my daughter, who's now 37. And she was how old when he made it? She was just born. This was, this was his idea of a soft, a soft toy.